All right, welcome. So we're gonna be building out this app that you see here on the screen in the next set of videos. So let me just kind of show you what it does. When we open it, the image views kind of animate and the cells are actually deleted and inserted as we close it and open it, right? So they're deleted, there's no cells on the screen right now. We open it, there's now two table view cells in the first section. So I expect you to have some understanding of UI table views and it would be awesome if you've worked a little bit with sections, but if you don't have any experience with UI table views and you don't haven't worked with sections, that's completely fine. You should be able to follow along perfectly fine with these videos. It might be a little challenging, but you will learn. And if you stick through these videos, you will learn how to build this and understand a lot about UI table views. But you obviously are gonna have a few questions even like if you go through it all and you have no experience, you're probably gonna have a few questions afterwards, but that's why the comment section exists. Just drop a comment or basically leave a question in Q and A and I will get back with you. So yeah, and if you are a student yourself or watching here, if you want to help other students out in the comments, that would be great or Q and A or whatever we want to call it. Right. All right. So what I want you to do is open up a new Xcode project because we're just going to going to get started here and get our table view controller on the screen and get things set up with our methods. Okay. And then we'll hop into another video. I actually tried recording this all in one video and it turned out to be an hour long and I didn't even get the animations in. That's how difficult it was to do in one video. Anyway, let's call this a uh, drop down spots app because you can see I've kind of branded this as a, an app called spots. Cause if you open that first tab, you can see there's like Himalayas and Tetons. I don't think that image is the Himalayas, but the Tetons definitely is. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and go into our app delegate and I want you to delete this comment. And if you've never watched like my kind of style of programming, check out my YouTube channel where I show you basically how to set things up from the app delegate. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. So right now it uses storyboards, right? If you were to compile this, it would open it up in storyboards and we can basically just give this a background color. So a view.backgroundcolor of dot yellow. And if you were to compile that, you'd see it's yellow, okay? But we don't wanna use storyboards. So what we need to do is we actually need to kind of set things up from our app delegate. We don't have to delete our storyboard file or anything. Uh, I do that in a lot of my videos, but I'm not gonna do it in this one because it's not necessary. But we're still not gonna use it. What we're gonna do is just initialize things from our app delegate. So we'll say window is equal to UI window. And then we'll say window dot make key invisible. So it shows the window and makes it the key uh, window. And then we'll say window dot root view controller is equal to view controller. So basically I'm just making an instance of our view controller class in view controller dot swift. So this class making an instance of it and setting it as the window root view controller. Okay. So that's how you set it up from the app delegate. Now, one thing I do want to do though, is make it into a UI navigation controller. Cause you can see in here, we have spots up there like that. So it's a navigation controller. If you don't know what that is, let's just do it right now and you'll learn. Okay. So we want that kind of top part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let nav controller is equal to UI navigation controller. And let's select this bottom one with a root view controller. And I'm just going to put view controller in it. Okay. And then now we can say that the root view controller is actually the nav controller and that will work much better. All right, so yeah, there you go. You can see that we have our navigation controller now. Now what I wanna do is set a title on our view controller. We can do that in view controller.swift. So, so right below background color yellow, we'll do that, but let's change it to white instead of yellow. And then what I wanna do is just say navigation item dot title is equal to, and we'll just say spots and we should be Gucci to go. Let's go ahead and see what's good. And also, we're going to need some images in this, in this, uh, kind of series. So we'll get to that in a different video, but that's what these three images here are down on the bottom here. They're from unsplash.com. Super awesome website. Just tons of free photos. It's kind of too good to be true. All right. Anyway, 
we're set up there. Let's go ahead and set up our UI table view controller. So what I want you to do is instead of deriving this from UI view controller, let's say UI table view controller. And then we'll just keep it as view controller. Um, you can rename it if you want. I mean, to prevent confusion, we probably should. So I'm just gonna call this table view controller. And then the thing is, we're gonna have to rename this in a couple places. We obviously don't in the comment, but I'm going to just to keep things clean. And then we have to rename the file. Well, like we really don't, but like, I mean, if we're gonna rename everything, we should just rename everything. So I've renamed the view controller.swift to table view controller, even the file name. And then now in our app delegate, we have to make sure that we call it as table view controller, not view controller, okay? So go ahead and pause it and make sure your app delegate looks something like this, or it probably isn't gonna work, right? These, these four lines, it just has to look like that, okay? And if you're still crashing at that point, then just make sure that your table view controller looks like this. Pause it and make sure it looks like that. All right, so we should be good. Now what we need to do is kind of derive our method. So let's get some cells on the screen. Let's just say number of rows. Well, let's say number of sections and we'll just return three. And the reason I'm doing this is because in our completed app, you can see that we have three sections. Notice how it says close, open, just basically these three sections. Those are those, right? And we have to override this method. So next thing we'll do is we'll just say um, title for header. Okay, that didn't work. Header for, okay, what the freak? We'll just use view for header. I guess it was title for header, but it doesn't matter. And in view for header, we wanna return this button, right? So let's just say let button is equal to UI button. And we'll say button dot set title. And by default, we want it to be, we want it to say close because we're gonna have them open. And for control state normal, and then we're just gonna return the button. And let's compile this and see if something's on the screen. I don't think anything, well, yeah, it should show up because the sections will show regardless of whether or not you have cells. It's kind of half the point. All right, so it's there, but we prob we're not really seeing anything in our titles, right? So I want to change the height for row out for our header. Let's just say height for header in section. And let's just return 40 and let's override this. And then if we're still not seeing anything, we'll just, okay. So the reason we're not seeing anything I just realized is because by default, the text color is, is uh, white. So we need to say <clears throat> button dot set text color, <clears throat> title color is to dot white. <laughs> no, wait, not black. We don't want to change it to white again. And we'll say for control state normal. And then we can get rid of this height for header method. We don't need that. And then now when we compile it, it's going to basically look, um, it's going to look right, right? You're going to be able to see it. All right, so you can see that it says close. And that's kind of what we want, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to basically get some cells on the screen now because we don't just want these, we want to actually have cells. So let's go up here and let's just put a comment and let's just say, let's say, let's do it right here. We'll say header. And then we can say sections and rows. And then we're gonna provide the rows right above this. So we'll say number of rows, and then make sure it's overridden. And then it's basically just gonna be the number of rows in section, okay? So for now, we'll return two, and then let's recompile this and see what we get on the screen. Should just basically be blank cells, kind of getting rid of those lines, right? right? So let's see. All right, sweet. So it crashed and that's because we haven't really provided a cell, right? So it's trying to return two, but there's no cell data, okay? So what we need to do is provide a, the method cell for row at. And then in here, we just need to kind of DQ a reusable cell. So let's say let cell is equal to table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier. Okay, if I could type Jeez, oh, I hit the other arrow key. I hate this keyboard. I hate Apple keyboards. I hate them so much because the arrow keys are 
freaking annoying. All right. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to say with cell identifier, cell ID, and then we're going to say for index path. And then we're just going to return the cell. And for the text, we'll, oh my gosh, these arrow keys, we'll say cell.textlabel.text .text is equal to hello there. And then what I want you to do is we're going to have to actually register the cell or this is going to crash, right? So let's recompile this and watch it crash. And if you're not at this point, just pause the video and get all this code in here, okay? All right, you'll see it crashes. And if you go into your terminal here or whatever this, whatever they want to call it in Xcode, it's going to say NS internal inconsistency exception, reason unable to dequeue a cell with identifier cell ID, must register a nib or class for the identifier or connect a prototype cell in storyboard. Now, I'm obviously not going to use storyboards because I'm not satan himself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to register it manually with code so what we want to do is we want to write a method and say setup table view and then we want to say file private setup table view and in this method what we're going to do and i don't know why but whenever i type file private i always forget to type function so we'll say same with file private variables i always forget the func or var let all right next thing we're going to do is we're just going to say table view dot register and then i want you to oh my freaking heck this these freaking arrow keys dog i hate them all right we're gonna say register and then <laughs> register is a class for use in creating new table view cells we're gonna select this top one and we're just gonna say ui table view cell dot self right now what we're gonna want to do is put in the same id and real quick let me explain this okay so what we're doing now is using just a default UI table view cell, but when we create a custom cell in a few videos from now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to rename it. So it's going to be like something like card cell. That's what I'm going to call it because that's what I called it when I built it out. And we're basically going to replace that and then cast it in our in our cell photo app. But we're not going to do that now. I just wanted to make you aware of it because that's kind of how people learn is... Um, basically just reiterating okay so the fact that i mentioned it in this video is going to make it more comprehensible when you get around to it it's really interesting it's kind of cool all right anyway what we want to do is we want to create a variable for cell id because you can see they're the same and everything works great let's recompile our application see but i want to kind of drill this concept of um i don't i don't no, I said concept, but basically you'll see that we get this, right? We have our three sections and our two rows for each, and then it has hello there in each, right? But if you've ever done any React Redux, specifically Redux, you're going to have these things called action or types, right? And you use constants. And I didn't really understand it for the longest time, but as soon as I remembered about cell IDs and iOS development, I realized, oh, that's why, right? If we were to change this cell ID to like cell ID and we accidentally hit like F or something on the keyboard and then we recompiled it, it's going to crash because we've no longer, we're going to get the same error we got before we typed this line because we no longer have a cell registered with cell ID. We have one registered with cell ID F and don't ask me why we have to register it. That's just how it is. But I assume it's simply because you might have other types of cells, right? Like you might have a table view that returns two types of cells. So you might have one that is cell IDF and one that's cell ID. Okay. But basically what we need to do, and, and even then you might wonder like, okay, why can't I just cast it in here? And it's like, okay, well now we're getting really deep into it. And that's just how it's programmed beneath the surface. And it's something we really don't need to understand. Anyway, what we need to do is create a constant and just call it cell underscore ID and I'll replace it there and then we can name it up here right we can say file private let i remembered the let this time <laughs> and we'll say cell id is equal to and then really this string can be whatever but obviously it makes the most sense just to do that okay so the reason we're doing this is because i mean if we're really being efficient we could just do that but the reason we're doing this is because now if you were to go in here and accidentally type that f right and recompile it it's going to throw you an error before it even runs which is really what you want because then you know before the app even crashes that it doesn't work. That's the whole reason you use a constant like that. And that's the whole reason if you're into React Redux that you use a type in 
in your action creators, okay? Now, a lot of that probably didn't make sense because I was just talking about Redux a bit, but basically we're using that for that reason, right? We want it to crash before, it's better to have a crash or it's better to have a syntax error than a crash, right? Because a crash can go undetected and you could release it to the public and then all of a sudden a user gets that crash and we don't want that. Okay, so that was kind of a rant, but I thought it was necessary and I think it's good to just kind of fill you on in details like that and just teach you that way, okay? So, and let me know if you like that or if you prefer me to just get to the, the point and just build out the apps. Because when I'm watching videos, I personally just like uh, to watch them build it really quickly. I'm not really a fan of the lecture kind of style, but I was just testing that out there to get some feedback in the comments or in the Q&A or whatever. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and just say cell data. And then we're really kind of set up here, right? If we recompile our app, you can see basically what we saw before. And that's basically just our UI table view, right? So now we're at a good point to kind of transition this into an app that looks more like this, right? We've got all of our sections and we've got some data in each one of these. Now, this is actually a very kind of complicated app, not very complicated, but it's, it takes a little more work than you, you might think. I don't know. That sounds really negative, but it it's it's easy and you're going to learn it, but it does take a little bit of coding. So what I want to do is I want to hop into the next video where we're actually going to learn how we can structure our data so that it can better fit this. And then we're going to refactor our number of sections and number of rows to kind of fit this data better. Okay. Now, if that doesn't make sense, just hop in the next video and we're going to learn about it. All right. I'll see you all in just a moment.